Okay, happy weekday to us. Let's see what we got going today. We are going to talk about why do headphone, most headphones have one speaker driver? I guess versus having like a tweeter or a mid range and a woofer like speakers or yeah. a hundred so different freaking drivers. Typically, when you see like a, a standard conventional floor sanding speaker, it's a three way. That's more or less the classic design, right? So why is that not implemented in a headphone, I guess? Why do you not see more than one driver in headphones more often than not? Well, a lot of reasons. Space is one, you know? Yeah, that's a biggie. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Typically with conventional speakers, you have a three way configuration. You got a tweeter, a mid range and a woofer. And with something like that, you could kind of get away with putting as many drivers in as you want for the most part. And the disadvantages aren't quite as stark as they would be on a headphone. In a headphone, you have considerably much more limitations in the physical available real estate. So it means your drivers need to be smaller or angled or positioned in a weird way. You could get phase imbalances and anomalies and stuff like that. All this sound needs to come into your ear. And so not only are there intrinsic challenges in being able to physically implement multiple drivers, but... In addition to that, a lot of times you don't need multiple drivers. Uh, the acoustic energy required to move your eardrum when the driver's right next to your ear is very different than when it's far away. Yeah, so, but you could probably ignore that. Like, you, you could have small multiple drivers. They don't have to be acoustically powerful, really, I guess, right? I sure, mean, could, then, absolutely. A mid-range driver and a tweeter driver and a headphone could be relatively tiny compared to, like, a, a speaker. Yeah, you still Certainly run into some challenges, though, <laughs> in integrating those together. And making sure all the phase is aligned. That'd be cool. That'd be cool to take a six and a half inch woofer like on these speakers and shove them on here and see. I'm sure somebody has done it. Oh, it probably I'm, sounds like shit, but mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody has done it. <laughs> You'd have pure bass. <laughs> I want to talk about rocking out. Geez, your head would vibrate. From our from our standpoint, like our headphone, since we're running a planar driver, it's capable of more than capable of full range frequency response from one driver. So you know, given that, why complicate it? Like why why would you add more drivers to it, which adds more phase anomalies? It's dip, the problem with the problem you have with multiple drivers is like Jason with a speaker. What's the issue when you have a tweeter or a woofer? Well, integrating them together is one one challenge. <laughs> yeah, and in a headphone, it would be freaking like probably ten really times are, worse. Yeah, because it's so close. Like, yeah, you know. I mean you and I think that's like when we hear like when we listen to things that headphones and ears, whatever, IEMs that do have multiple drivers, don't you always hear the, you can almost it's, always hear the, the difference yeah. be sound between the drivers. It's never coherent, totally. I mean, they're, they are better now than they used to be. But yeah, I remember when they first started adding a bunch of drivers, yeah, it was, you know. And a not, few, the few of the headphones I've heard, very rarely someone does a headphone with like a, two multiple drivers. And they're like, they're, I think a full-size headphone in particular, I think they're even worse in terms of integration. You know, they just, it's just the two drivers sound completely different. They're right. different drivers. They're made of different materials, you know, and they're right against your ear. Well, and it's just like, your, your ear's not going to. Uh, yeah. Coming from being used to one driver, you know, so you're, you're used to it being, you know. Right. No, right. no separate drivers. So when you hear it, you notice it a lot more when you well, switch true. away from it. That's true. So Going back from like a planar single de design or even a dynamic to multiple drivers. Yeah, you're right. I think it's the same with speakers too. Like there's yeah. always been people who like prefer a two-way design, which is just a woofer tweeter. Or which people obviously that is one. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, there's guys that love like the loather drivers, which is a single like a paper cone you know, with a wizard cone in the middle to do the eye highs, and, mm -hmm. but they love it. And they'll, they'll love it primarily for vocals or that range. It's not obviously not gonna do real good at 20 kilohertz, right? But they do love it for the range it's in and they load it. They put it in big wooden cabinets that add body to it, right? Horn loaded. They take this little driver that's like, you know, this big and they, they gotify it into a cabinet that you know, is bigger than the room uh, to make it work. And um, and it's all because they want one driver and not more. So yeah, that's been going on in audio for a while. But you know, I've always preferred with speakers. I've always preferred a two-way design. The three ways are: the more drivers you implement, the harder it is to get them to be coherent. And the more crossover points you have, and the more components you have in the crossover. 
and all that fate changes phase and the sound and so on. So it's complicated when you start adding drivers to make it sound good. Mm -hmm. The simplest approach almost always tends to be the best if you can get away with it. If there's no significant disadvantages. And in the case of a headphone, there really is no disadvantage to having a single driver. You could have multiple architectures that you could get away with full range, no problem, and great extension of both ends with a single driver. So adding another driver, adding another degree of complexity with a crossover really doesn't make a lot of sense. There's more often too much to lose and so little to gain. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's more or less required in a, a conventional floor standing speaker. Because um, the surface area you need to generate the volume out of uh, something like a planar magnetic or, or uh, electrostatic speaker, it's yeah, you for, need a lot of people, air for a lot of people, it's challenging just because of the design technology, because of the physical architecture of the driver. And well, so, the panels, the speakers that do that, the panels are large. They're, they're really physically, physically large, large and, yeah. Yeah, and they take up a lot of space. They're flat. I mean, they're not deep or anything, but right. yeah, it's, and it's you, a, and you that can't put them presents walls. A, yeah, the, yes. yeah, they don't like the back wall too much. You need a lot of room to make them work. You couldn't just take a planar speaker and shove it against the wall. Right. It'd be like it's basically turning it into a closed back headphone, right? <laughs> it's kind of the same thing. And you, you get you you need you could do it, but you need a a, sh a shit ton of absorption on the back wall. It can't just you can't just have the back wave of the speaker <laughs> bounce off the wall. It just cancels itself out. It cancels its own primary. Uh, a lot of frequencies just cancel, and it just sounds like death. You know, it sounds like it's broken. You might as well lay it on the ground and try to listen to it. That's what it would sound like putting a planar speaker or a flat speaker against the wall. It doesn't right. work. I think it's a lot of times more or less an efficiency perspective. It's just not practical to do something other than a, um, a multi-driver arrangement in something where it's not right next to your ear and closely coupled to your eardrum. Um, that's why you see in almost everything, any type of portable electronics where they're trying to get better sound quality, there's multiple drive arrangements. And a lot of times, even in cell phones, they're moving towards that now. Um, it just seems to be the more efficient approach to get it done when you need to generate that acoustic volume, uh, the acoustic energy. But with a headphone, when it's right next to your ear, it's absolutely not necessary, and there's really no advantage for multiple drivers. There's just a lot more complexity, a lot more to go wrong. So it for the most part, the advantage is trying to get as close to one driver as possible. Uh, it's just not practical in a lot of ways uh, to do that with a floor standing speaker. You do see it, it's just it, so much less common. It does boil down to materials too, you know, like I don't think a paper coned driver in a headphone would sound good. You know what I mean? It would be, I don't think it would have any high frequency response in a dynamic driver, you know, to use something like a pa the old style paper. Same as it would be in a speaker. I mean, it, it's, it's usually used, you use those materials for woofers. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get into the higher frequency ranges, you tend to want to use more, much more rigid, lightweight materials uh, to create those frequencies. So the materials to a big extent matter, you know, and, you know, so you, when you see a lot of these dynamic drivers on, on, on headphones, I'm sure, again, we picked on Mylar in the past because it's so common, but. Um, you know, it's a fairly, but it works well for that application. You can run a, you can make a fairly full range driver. It's not going to be great all the way up high and it's not going to be great all the way, up, all the way in the base, but you can make a fairly full range dynamic driver out of that material. And I'm sure the, the other, other headphone companies are using much more novel materials and, you know, composites and so on to do, to try to get, to extend those frequency ranges with a single driver. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the best way to go. Like we all, I think everyone would agree. One driver is way simpler than yeah. multiple drivers. If it gets the job so, done. <laughs> yeah, if you can do it, you know, which obviously we can. Not only that, you know, you got to consider what you're dealing with in terms of where you're, what, how the ear is picking up the sound. When you add multiple drivers, you're adding the sounds coming from multiple locations within the headphone. And you're going to have some weird phase anomalies going on in a, in a full-size headphone. You're, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be, I don't think you're going to be able to time align those drivers. I mean, they have a hard time doing it in IEMs and they're talking, you know, what are you talking about? Eighth inch differences or millimeters of difference in a full-size headphone. If you put a tweeter up here, you know, and the whole thing's a woofer and you throw some mid-range drivers around here, I mean, your ear is going to go, what the hell are you doing to me, right? You're, it's gonna, it's gonna hear that sound coming from the various drivers. It's not, it's gonna, it's not gonna sound like a point source, 
you know? And so your brain's going to say, it's just going to spit that out and go, you know, the imaging will be messed, totally messed. And so if you're going to do multiple drivers in a headphone, man, you really got to do some R&D here to figure out, you know, either you got to run DSP on it, you know, and tweak the shit out of it uh, externally with some special amplifier uh, with maybe spe- maybe multiple leads. I don't know, you know, triamp the headphone. <laughs> uh, but I don't think there's any good way to do it, uh, you know, and, and do it properly. So, yeah, I mean, right. it would be a hell of a challenge, and, and there's no benefit that I could see for it. There, in fact, if anything, the reason you'd do it is because one of your drivers isn't full range, right? You're, you're making up for a, a driver that's not really, that could be full range but isn't for whatever reason. So if you ask me, if you do the one single driver properly, none of this should matter. You shouldn't need more than one driver yeah. in, a, in a full-size headphone. Well, in things like IEMs, the reason why you classically see so many drivers in the higher-end models is because they're using typically a balanced armature, and that has a finite bandwidth that um, it's just not practical or possible to really implement a full-range balanced armature. Uh, and so they tend to rely on you putting a bunch of them in to be able to cover the full spectrum that you could hear. And so that isn't necessarily the best approach. It's just if you want a balanced armature design, which has intrinsic advantages, then you really need to move to multi-drivers. And the trouble there is being able to have them cohesive and coherent. Yeah, it's still a tuning process, which everybody has their way of doing it. And mm-hmm. you know, ultimately, all those drivers have to combine into your ear canal uh, evenly. And um, I don't know, to me, I still hear that too when I hear multiple. I, I barely, I don't do much with INMs yet in terms of other people's stuff, but the few that I've heard, you know, I'm just so used to this type of sound that I don't think I could get used to multiple, multiple drivers like that. It just, we've had a few of our dealers that have come up with IEMs that are, they claim are similar to listening to our headphones. I mean, I think in terms of tonality, I'm yeah. obviously not going to be. A, a big 66 millimeter planar driver, right? But we've had people say, you know, that for customers that need IEMs, there's places like on planes and stuff they can't wear they can't wear open backs. And um, you know, and they said, well, this this one, you know, if you if you like the bis sound, that this IEM's pretty good. And you're still looking at a, a grand or two. We're not talking inexpensive IEMs. Yeah. Um, you know, and they're they're reputable companies, and they they every every it seems like every company at least has one, don't you think, Jace? Where are they? Like one that people tend to say it, you know, it could be at any price point, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you looked at it more than I have. Go to, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I've listened to a few that the people said this is what are the people that have twelve sixty six get for IEMs, and clearly they don't sell, sound like twelve sixty six. But um, right, you know, I the, the one the, the one thing I did notice though with the one that we listened to in Munich last year was uh, I don't know how many drivers they had, but it was a bunch. But they did have, they're very coherent for a multiple balanced armature IEM, like the best right. I've ever heard. So Was that the not, booth like right across from us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, yeah. So they didn't they didn't sound like a 12 I think it was a German but, company. Yeah, it was a German company. And um, yeah, they, they just sound, they didn't sound like multiple uh, drivers. So that's probably what right. people liked about them. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Yeah, and I mean, so obviously that's what people are hearing, mm-hmm. right? Is on on most of the IEMs, if you if you get to this level and you go to that, you go well, you know, that's the trade off of yeah. of an IEM. So hopefully we're hopefully once we finish our IEM, we'll be able to change all that. You know, we'll have a single driver coherent mm-hmm. planar IEM, and life will be grand. I think that covers that subject reasonably enough. So it seems a good time to wrap up. So as always, if you guys like videos like this, subscribe to see more. We'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Let us know. We'll read them and we might answer them on a future video. And as always, take care.